During the heart of the Great Depression, one man became public enemy number one, John Dillinger. Bank robberies, daring escapes, and a charm that was on a legendary level. But as the law closed in, Dillinger sought to outrun the one thing that he couldn't, his fingerprints. Under the flicker of a lone light bulb, Dillinger would make a decision that would prove to be painful. His plan was to erase his fingerprints with acid, thereby slipping through the fingers of the law enforcement agencies that hunted him. The procedure was agonizing. The acid meant to scar and obliterate his unique fingerprints etched away the very identity that Dillinger hoped to disguise. But would it be enough to fool the young science of fingerprint analysis? See, fingerprints are formed deep within the skin's dermis layer. They're nearly impossible to alter permanently. So the science tells us that while Dillinger's plan was bold, it was ultimately in vain. Despite his efforts, Dillinger's days were numbered. His altered fingerprints were not enough to avoid detection, and his life of crime came to a dramatic end outside a Chicago movie theater. Yet his case marks one of the first high-profile attempts of an individual trying to outsmart forensic science. But today we still see some type of masking or use of evasion in crime, whether that's criminals using gloves or masks to hide their identity, or even the use of surgery to try and alter fingerprints. Take for example the case of Robert Phillips. He underwent a surgical procedure where skin from his chest was grafted onto his fingertips. However, like Dillinger, Phillips' efforts were ultimately in vain. Law enforcement agencies were able to identify him despite the altered fingerprints. So whether you're using surgery means or acid, you still can't escape your unique identifiers. More modern attempts are just as fascinating. The cartels and drug traffickers use the same methodologies. They use surgical means, they use acids, they use abrasives, all to try and evade and profit um, their, through their crime. Take for example the Japanese Yakuza. Now the Yakuza use a method called skin peeling, and this is where they slowly shave away layers and layers of their skin to try and alter and ultimately obliterate the fingerprint. However, these methods are risky and often just don't work. You have to get super deep through the dermis in order to actually remove any kind of fingerprint. Take for example, the drug cartels in South America and Central America and the case of El Chapo. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the notorious Mexican drug lord and his associates have reportedly used various methods to alter their fingerprints. These methods include surgical alterations and other forms of mutilation to avoid being identified by their fingerprints. Surgery is a really interesting means of uh, doing it. So what they do is they cut slices in the fingerprint and then overlap it on top of itself and then let it heal to where you have different sections. So whether it's surgery or acid or fire or chemicals, the alteration of fingerprints ultimately doesn't work. In fact, it makes your fingerprints more unique and it makes it more visible to where a suspicious investigator will notice damage to your fingerprints. And I, for one, don't care to go through the pain of having my fingerprints shaved off just so that it cannot work. Thanks for joining us in the video today. If you liked today's episode, then click the like button. I know Bonesworth really appreciates it. And consider leaving a comment because I enjoy reading them. It gives me ideas for future content. So, which way would you go with? Would you do surgery? Would you use a blowtorch and try and alter your fingerprints that way or would you use acid? Me personally, I'm going with surgery. I'm Detective Zach, that's Bonesworth, and until next time, stay curious.